Greetings from chess.com. It's my pleasure to cover the profile of Indian superstar Grandmaster Hari Krishna Pendala today. It is his birthday. So happy birthday Grandmaster Hari Krishna Pendala. Let's start to know more about him through this video. He started chess at a young age and he learned the initial moves through his grandfather late Ranga Rao Tari Gopula. and after uh, learning the rules he started developing the interest and then went on to play a lot of tournaments so when i told him about the series and asked him some questions he answered them all and also sent his best games we will take a look at that i asked him what his favorite chess piece was and he says that it depends on the position but if he had to pick one he would go with bishop and when i asked him about his favorite chess opening he says that um, He has played so many different openings in his career. It's hard to pick one, but if he were supposed to pick, then he would go with uh, Sicilian Sveshnikov and uh, French. And then um, in one of the streams with Grandmaster Ganguly, he revealed that he loved reading this book called Siddhartha by Herman Hesse. And in addition to that, he loves to read books on economics. And uh, I asked him, what's the biggest life lesson he has learned through chess or life? Uh, to which he said uh, that every second is unpredictable and then i asked him uh, if panda were a chess piece how would it move uh, he replied saying that pandas are usually uh, moving slowly and in chess that role is given to the kings so he doesn't know if there is any appropriate role for the pandas but maybe pandas could move one square like a king but not diagonally let's say if the king was on e4 it could go to e5 d4 f4 any So those were the answers of uh, Grandmaster Hari Krishna. He has had a huge list of accomplishments. I'm going to tell you about them now. You can see that he has won so many events. Uh, he became the youngest GM in September 2001. Uh, that record is now uh, being held by Gukesh. And um, I mean, uh, when it comes to Indian Grandmasters, and uh, he has also become a Commonwealth Champion, Asian Continental Champion. a world junior champion he has won the dynasty event his uh, the big group and he's won the bl masters open and has represented india in uh, many olympiads he was also part of the uh, uh, gold winning team in the online chess olympiad and uh, he has won bronze in the world team championship he has won gold silver and bronze at asian teams and he broke into the top 10 in the world uh, the top 10 list in the world in 2013 and uh, he has played for baden baden he has played for team solway he has also played for bharat petroleum in the a group and uh, he currently plays for novi board he got married to a title player in 2018 her name is soshanovic nereza i'm not sure about the pronunciation uh, my apologies uh, uh, on that and uh, so that's a brief uh, about grandmaster hari krishna Uh, he is a legend and uh, i had also covered a miniature win of uh, hari krishna in the top 10 uh, uh, miniatures uh, playlist i think you can check check it out there now it's time to dive into the chess scene and uh, here i have the game uh, between mamit jarov and hari krishna pentala where hari krishna was black and in this position um, this is from the olympiad and uh, this this team uh, this particular match was really uh, important for india because india was still in contention and in this position after b3 b4 knight e4 knight e4 bishop e4 c3 a3 a5 a4 in this position hari krishna came up with a novelty the previous move here was a4 but uh, grandmaster hari krishna played bishop takes b4 and uh, this was also india uh, engine's best choice and uh, it's 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 clear that uh, this was part of his preparation after bishop e2 b4 queen d3 the h7 ball is attacked but uh, here uh, grandmaster hari krishna came up with a completely different concept he neglected the pawn on h7 and uh, decided to develop a piece he got queen to e7 and after bishop e2 h7 he played knight to d7 now after bishop e4 uh, this is where the uh, concept is unveiled and uh, when i looked at this game i was reminded of uh, petrosian sacrifices it's but i think this comes somewhere in between uh, topelov's exchange sacrifices and petrosian's exchange sacrifices because you see in case of topelov uh, 
the action sacrifices are uh, aggressive in nature and they are to get some initiative and in case of Petrosian some of the action sacrifices are defensive in nature they are supposed to hold the position together in this position it does both I think after knight takes e5 d takes e5 grandmaster Hare Krishna plays rook a d8 and after queen f3 he plants the rook on d5 now this position is uh, filled with adventures and makes a, a good practice position you can play this position out I think against your friend or a computer it's very easy uh, to say that okay look at the in engine's evaluation and say okay white is better or uh, black is better but this position is like um, not easy to assess um, I think even in the engines in case of engines you have to go uh, at a depth to understand what's exactly happening in the position here uh, uh, Mamedyarov played queen g4 and if you're wondering what happens after bishop into d5 black is intending to play e takes d5 and then uh, these pawns and then the bishops they together hold a lot of uh, possibilities for black uh, mainly connected with uh, this active rook and active pieces and this uh, pawns for moving forward very easily and uh, white lacks a clear target Though the king is in the center, it's not easy to break open. So here Mamedyarov played queen g4 and after king f8, bishop takes d5, e takes d5. Note how uh, Grandmaster Hare Krishna Pantala makes use of his rook on h8. After rook a4, he plays c5, uh, you know, providing extra support and also opening the eyes for the bishop. And after bishop a3, he plays rook to h6. I really like this move, uh, a very creative way to develop uh, the rook and bring it into the action I think rook could come to b6 could come to e6 and also could come to g6 to you know, harass this queen on g4 after bishop into b4 a takes b4 rook e1 uh, in this position king g8 could have been interesting but he went for queen e8 and after rook a7 queen c6 there's another critical position after queen d6 king g8 and in this one um, Mamedya Rook blundered with Rook into B7 but Black is already quite fine and uh, he's the one who is having the initiative I think. In this position Mamedya Rook gave up uh, the exchange, he returned it with Rook takes B7 but maybe F3 was the way to go forward. After Rook takes B7 there is a tactical trick which allows Black to win the game after Queen B7, Queen C5. Black can simply take the pawn on E5 and if you go Rook A7 for a moment it seems that okay white is back in the game but there is d4 which decides the game in black's favor because if you take uh, rook b7 there is rook c5 and c2 coming and if you play queen takes d4 there is rook d5 and you can't move the queen because of a mate on d1 and if you take the queen there is rook d4 this happened in the game and now if you go rook c7 there is rook d1 check followed by rook b1 picking up the b3 pawn and uh, here after king g2 is simply played rook d1 c2 is threatened and if uh, rook c7 there is rook b1 and the b3 pawn falls and these two pawns decide the game so that was uh, game number one i have another game to show you this is a game between uh, Pantela Hare Krishna and uh, Karyakin and here uh, the critical position i want to show you comes after a few moves um, yeah after pd4, bishop d4, cd4, rook c1, e5, knight c7. Okay, so this is a position, uh, I think again, this is also a nice practice position. Uh, it's rich uh, with uh, ideas and what to move. What would you play? How would you follow it up? All right, I'm going to reveal the move now. In this position, uh, Grandmaster Hare Krishna found a way to launch an attack on the king side with knight to h2 you can also see that this point these pawns are pointing towards the king side and uh, that's also a clue given by the pawns that uh, uh, a king side attack could uh, give us a lot of initiative so he goes knight h2 and then after knight g5 he goes knight h5 and then after pawn to a3 he simply plays b4 doesn't touch the pawn on a3 and then after knight e6 he plays queen d2 his idea is to go f4, f5 and then after knight g5 he first plays knight g4 but f4 was also interesting in the position and after queen f5 I think it's a good moment for you to see what you would do as white if you want to take the pawn with rook takes c7 I think uh, that's not 
uh, not something that you would want to do because black has knight f3 check disrupting your position you are then forced to take and double the pawns and then after queen h5 black is back in the game so that's the threat guys and i hope you have seen the clue with that i'm going to reveal the move now the correct move in the position is knight hf6 check because black cannot take this knight due to the fork and so king h8 happened in the game and then after knight takes e8 rook takes e8 and then rook takes e7 Hare Krishna was on top and he went on to win the game another game that I want to show you which is also uh, Hare Krishna Pentela's pick is this game against uh, Wojtasek where he was black and after e5 I think this position you see white is attacking on the king side black is attacking on the queen side because that's where the kings are so he goes with a typical uh, sacrifice with b3 and after queen takes c3 just see how consistent he is with his initiative on the queen side he plays b takes a2 check white has to respond he plays bishop b4 again attacking the queen white has to respond and then he exchanges the bishop again he has to respond to this he's just not giving any space for white to do anything on the king side this is a good technique to remember after bishop into e1 he played uh, h6 and now um, Hare Krishna cannot really take g 6 because of rook f6 so he was very precise he played rook fc8 making space for the king uh, for a possible run and uh, after rook takes e1 he played knight b4 because now he wants to neutralize the pressure by exchanging queens because black has already got some edge on the queen side and so knight b4 makes sense if not for knight before I think uh, black is in danger. Knight before is the only move in the position and then after queen takes c7, rook takes c7, knight c2 is threatened. So here uh, Wojtasek found a way to pick up this hanging rook on e8 with g 7 but that did not stop uh, Hare Krishna from uh, getting an edge. He played knight c2 check followed by pick picking up the e1 rook and then after rook h8, rook takes a8, he picked up this e3 pawn with knight into g2 and knight takes e3 and in this race you can already see that the pawn is on g5 well ahead of the race and uh, though both sides have uh, three pawns each it is black who is on top because of the pawn on g5 and this race was eventually won by Hare Krishna so those were some of the picks uh, of Grandmaster Hare Krishna himself and I'm very happy that I was able to cover them in this video so uh, dear viewers I think uh, uh, you can also let us know what you think is the best uh, game of Hare Krishna based on whatever you have seen. I personally have enjoyed his games in the prayer and uh, and his um, ability to squeeze points in the end games. I have personally learned a lot and keep learning from his games. And uh, with that, I would like to end this video. Happy birthday, uh, Grandmaster Hare Krishna Pantala. We wish you a great year ahead. And uh, dear viewers, I hope you like the video. Do give it a thumbs up and um, do subscribe to our channel. I'll be back with another video soon. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.